video. So what I'm going to be doing today is utilising the leftover meatballs with uh, pepper and tomato sauce. Okay, and what I'm going to be doing is a nice cottage pie. So, um, just made sense. So what I'm going to do is basically fry some garlic in a pan. Be careful when you put some rapeseed oil in there. So let's get that going. I'm preheating the oven already at gas mark 180. I've also pre-boiled uh, some carrots and some potatoes there. Okay, I'm just softening up the butter. Oh, the butter. <laughs> On um, the top of the potato lid. So what I'm going to do with that, just going to chop some butter into the potato mix, just like a good wedge of butter in there. That's it. The reason why I was actually uh, softening it up on the lid, on the, on the warm lid, is because it's just easier when I mash it, okay? So, also, I'll just put it here now, it's actually not too So in goes uh, a bit of creme fraiche. This is just what I just, what I'm doing. You know, people make their mash different ways, a bit of creme fraiche in there, just helps make it a little bit smooth. And also, just wash the spoon a little bit. I've got some uh, soft cheese with some garlic and herbs. Yeah, just put a little spoon of, of that in. Just thought it'd be like a nice little flavour there. Can use bouson as well, like nice French garlicky cheese. That's fine. In goes the onions into the pan there. So it's, well, it's actually a couple of shallots, small shallots, with two cloves of garlic. Okay. Just give that a little whiz round. And this is just a very quick meal, I, I think. Um, so I'm going to do is, um, where is my cheese grater, should I say, nutmeg grater, just break some nutmeg in there, that's it, put that back in the dish, so that's fine, yeah, I only had a vegetable on it, so it's fine, okay, so now what I want to do, give it a splash of milk, give it a splash of cold milk if you've got that, just a little splash, yeah, just helps like, make it go a little bit smoother and again easier to uh, mash. Okay, in goes green beans, chopped green beans, yeah, or French beans, okay. Turn that down, now it's heated up, and turn it down low, the wok setting again. So I'm just going to saute them, soften them up. What I've got is, I did have some uh, fresh beef stock today, so I made, I've got some, uh, I've got two organic uh, beef stock cubes in here, just in hot water that's dissolved, okay? That's totally fine, I'm going to be utilising just that little bit of uh, leftover passata there, uh, I'm going to add some Worcestershire sauce there, some balsamic vinegar, a tiny spoonful of uh, sun-dried tomato paste, um, and some spinach flakes as well, and a bit of tomato puree. So in goes the tomato puree there. A good squeeze of that, so probably like a tablespoon. Okay. Just going to, in fact, just pour a little bit of that, like, so like a little teaspoon of that. Okay, I'm going to give it a little stir around. Can have a little splash of this stock. And if you ever think that it's like bubbling up too high, just raise it up off the hob a little bit. Let it calm down a little bit, yeah? And that's all you have to do. And until those the flavours have merged together, yeah? Made a little bit saucier, and then put it back on there. In goes the carrot. Let the carrot soak up these juices as well. Put a bit of Worcestershire sauce in there. 
probably like um, a tablespoon of that, and then a splash of balsamic vinegar. Okay. And turn that right up, reduce that down. What I'm going to do is get rid of all that vinegar taste, just reduce it down. I probably put in a little bit too much there because uh, what I realised is the actual filter thing on the top wasn't on there. So that's that's fine, it kind of glugged a little bit too much in there. So I'm just going to really reduce that down now, get rid of all that vinegar taste. It's fine, there's a remedy to fix everything, okay? I'm not going to edit the video just because of that. So boil that up, that's fine. Okay, so now I can get back to put some spinach flakes in there, actually. Put like a tablespoon of that. Okay. I'm lucky that balsamic vinegar um, makes quite a nice, rich, sort of beefy sort of uh, flavour anyway, and that's what I'm looking for when it's actually all combined in the cottage pie in the oven, it's going to go into a nice rich gravy anyway and the potato and the carrots will actually soak it all up, you know, be able to handle the, the punchiness. Okay, so this is good, just mash it up easy. I'm not adding any salt to this, okay. All I'll do is add some cracked black pepper, some green peppercorn, sorry. Always seem to get that mixed up. Doesn't really matter what colour they are. Okay. Good, good crack of pepper. That's fine. That's, that's great. But that's like bubbling up nicely. So now what I do is I add this beef stock in there. Yeah. And now that will switch up the flavour again and then really reduce that again. And I'll put some leftover passata in there, mellow it out a little bit, make it a bit sweeter. Yeah, that will help to get rid of the, any vinegary taste. Okay, you can if you've got it, any red, like red wine. Red wine typically used in a cottage pie or shepherd's pie. Shepherd's pie is like lamb, cottage pie is with beef mince. Okay. I'm not too fine about getting it like super, super Michelin star smooth, you know? This is just uh, rustic, resourceful cooking, you know what I mean? It's, uh, it's easy, yeah? That's it. But it looks pretty smooth to me, so it's all good. And I've got like the leftover meatballs with the tomato and pepper sauce. In goes that, yeah? So what I do... is uh, kind of like break up this uh, the meatballs a bit. Now that I've finished mashing that, just rinse that up, and um, I'll use that to sort of break up the, the meatballs a bit in the pan, so it actually makes more of like a beef mince, okay? They were made with beef mince, so now I can actually make the, the meatballs back into meat. Uh, beef mince, okay? Don't see why not. That's it. Just by actually breaking them up a little bit in the pan, we'll release that flavour of the beef in there, but also allow them to like just break up, cook down. Yeah? As they cook down, they will break up anyway. So that's fine. And I'm just going to cook that down, look. Look at that beef mince there. You can see that? That's like almost like beef mince. Didn't need a lot of persuasion because it was in a really hot sauce. And that's good. So that's just gonna, gonna bubble that up, reduce that down a bit. So now what I'm gonna do, have I got anything else to do? Not really. Nothing else to do. Might as well just put that back in the fridge. Give that 30, 31 seconds to go. <laughs> okay, put that in the sink. Let's have a go. It's quite saucy, 
So I'm just basically going to reduce, pull it, put it up to the highest heat if I can to reduce that. Yeah, it might take like uh, 30 seconds, a minute or so. I won't stir it too much because obviously stirring it actually uh, makes it reduce slower. Okay. And I have to wait for this to cook down a little bit before I put it in the pan and then I'll layer it with the, the mashed potato on top. And what I will do is um, when I layer the mashed potato on top, you just use a fork and sort of uh, create a nice little like ribbed pattern in it. That's what people normally do. Okay. I'll tell you what I can do. Because I want to utilise some of this tomorrow. I'm going to pour this in now, but not too much of the sauce. Okay. And then, so this is a good idea. Okay? This A saves you guys the weight. But B stops me from waiting to um, reduce the sauce, but also it allows me to utilize that sauce for tomorrow's dish. So I'm just going to scoop out like all the all the mints and the vegetables, or like most of it. Okay. Just go under. Because you want like quite a bit of gravy in there anyway. So that's fine, but you just don't want like a swimming pool of it, you know? It doesn't want to be like, you know, drowning in, in liquid. Yeah? And this is a quick way to solve the problem. Okay, so that's fine. I've just got that sauce left over there. Scoop out these last little bits of uh, carrot, that's fine. Doesn't really matter. There's some left over in there. I'm sure, I can utilize that tomorrow. And that looks nice, in fact. Yeah, you can see that. It's hard to gauge the angle of the camera. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is um, just use this spoon, scoop the mash on. Don't be afraid to use your finger or whatever to help it because it obviously it gets a little bit bloopy to mash. Just roughly put it on there and then I'll use a fork to neaten it up. Okay. in it but I don't have any frozen peas can you believe yeah I don't even I run out of peas the most simplest thing to, to actually keep I run out of. some people look to actually put corn in there I'm not I, I don't really like the idea of putting corn in there um, and some people like obviously have like greens on the side but I've decided to just put my green my greens actually in there like the, the French beans you can serve it with broccoli or wilted spinach, whatever, but I think it's got a good, you know, enough goodness in here, you know, that's, and it's like going to be saucy as well, so it doesn't need even an extra sauce, yeah? So you've got the veg in here, you've got the sauce, it's just a nice one pot meal, really, or one dish meal, should I say. Okay, that's fine. I'm just going to wash my hands. Then use the fork. You can see that. Get the petite potato and the carrot peelings out of the way. Garlic. So all I'm going to do is um, just use that the fork, yeah. Just like give it a little, a little sort of like texture in there. And what obviously that will do is um, the bits that are like raised up, that are peaked up, they just get a little bit crispy. And that's it. And then go this way. You can do whatever kind of pattern you want, yeah? 
doesn't really matter. Go again. Make it like a, even like a, a deep ridge, yeah? Almost like a tire tread. That's fine. That's the shepherd's pie. So I'm going to tongue that in the oven for... I'll see how it goes, but like, I'll probably check it after 20 minutes, but it might need like 25, half an hour. I'll see how it goes. Just, to, just depends on how long it takes to actually thicken up that sauce. Uh, I'm going to back it up to 200 in fact, and then leave, put it on 20 minutes and check it. It might need 30 minutes, okay? I'll show you a picture once it's plated up.